Your medical school interview is coming up really soon and you don't have any time left. Now whether you've done everything you possibly could have to prepare or you haven't done anything much at all, you're still wondering whether there's anything, even a tiny little thing that you can do in the limited time that you have left to help you secure that offer. Yes, there's actually quite a lot that you can do, but in order to find out what, we're going to have to use this very modern time machine and do some time traveling. So here I am in Devif High's bathroom. Now I would advise you not to be in someone else's bathroom, but technically that's me, so I, I have consent. I'm practicing my answers here in the shower, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The more practice that you get, you know, the more confident you are in answering those questions. But, as you may have noticed, I'm talking to myself, which is a completely different ball game to talking to other people. When I started answering these questions to other people, such as my parents and my friends, there are a lot more flaws that started to come out, such as often repeating myself and saying things such as like, ums and ahs, which made me sound a lot less confident. And some of those things I really wouldn't have clocked unless I practiced with other people. Plus on the actual day of your interview, make sure you get into the flow of talking to people. It's very easy to keep rereading your answers and saying it to yourself just to make sure you memorize all your answers correctly. But sometimes when you, you know, haven't spoken for a while out loud to other people, it takes time to get into the flow of talking and being more comfortable and open. And if you don't do that before your interview, you're going to end up doing it during your interview and that is going to impact your performance. What am I doing there? Writing paragraphs as answers? Don't do that. When you've written full out paragraphs, not only is it going to make it look like you rehearsed your answers, a critical mistake by the way, that can make you fail your interview as I mentioned in this video, but when you're saying it, you're going to want to recite it exactly the way that you wrote it. And if you recite it slightly wrong and don't remember what you put, it's just going to throw you off. Don't worry if you've already made paragraphs, just convert them into bullet points and practice forming full answers around those key points in the time that you have left. It's time for me to go again. Wow, I'm a little bit nauseous from all that horrible time travelling. Speaking of horrible, avoid talking negatively about your colleagues, your teammates and your bosses and try and always be positive. Interviewers want applicants that are kind and humble and applicants that don't put down their teammates in order to make them appear better. If you ooze happiness and smile, it's just more attractive and contagious and cheesy as it sounds, it really is true. And whilst you're practicing being all positive and smiley, you also also want to practice making a really good first impression. Having a really good first impression can set the tone of the entire interview. Luckily, a lot of you will be doing MMIs, which means that you can actually set a new first impression at every station. So if you mess up one station, don't worry, you still have many other stations to go where you can bring up your score. For some people, introductions are natural, but for others, not so much. So don't feel bad if you have to practice in front of the mirror for a really long time to get what you think is right. Hi, nice to meet you. My name's David Fai. Make sure you like and subscribe. Okay, so we've now teleported to an actual MMI interview that I took part in. I really love the fact that you come at dissection in university and it's something that I'm quite looking forward to. Just can't wait. What a silly boy. That university it doesn't even do dissection, it actually does prosection. That's why it's really important that you research university, know exactly why you apply to this one, maybe what's different about the course, why you prefer this course over other courses, maybe it's a structure and how um, the way it works suits your style of learning and your needs and most importantly, how you can add to that university. That's actually pretty good. One of the most crucial things that you need to do is to go over your personal statement and your work experience. That way you're able to answer questions about them a lot more faster because they're right at the forefront of your mind. If you hesitate on answering questions about them, then it can appear like you made some stuff up. Obviously by hesitating I don't mean pausing for a few seconds to gather your thoughts because that's a good thing. I know some medical schools actually ask a lot of questions about your personal statement, so make sure you're able to explain more about what you wrote. 
Hey everyone and welcome to this family workshop. And here I am hosting an event for the Great Exhibition Road Festival looking very cool. But what you can't see is behind the scenes where I've got my hairy legs out. Don't do that. Dress fully from top to bottom even though you know that only the top half is going to be visible. Not only is it a little bit risky that if for any reason that you have to move around and they catch you in your underwear, which is obviously not going to end well, do it for the psychological reasons. You know, it gets you into the right mindset and it makes you feel less lazy and more more active. You'll also notice that I've got some killer lighting around me which makes me look really good on zoom if I should say so myself but you probably don't and that's why you really need to watch this video which takes you through how you can look banging on camera during your online interview.